Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the memorial of St. Charles Luanga and Companions. And as we offer this Eucharist, let us express our love for God. Let us put our trust in Him and let us entrust our lives to Him. Let us now call to mind our sins and beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. Lord Jesus, you give us new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have made the blood of martyrs the seed of Christians, mercifully grant the field which is your church, watered by the blood shed by St. Charles Luanga and his companions, may be fertile and always yield you an abundant harvest through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Tobit. When the angel Raphael and Tobiah had entered Media and were getting close to Ekbatana, Raphael said to the boy, Tobiah, my brother, he replied, Here I am. He said, Tonight we must stay with Ragal, who is a relative of yours. He has a daughter named Sarah. So he brought him to the house of Ragal, whom they found seated by his courtyard gate. They greeted him first. He said to them, Greetings to you too, brothers. Good health to you and welcome. And he brought them into his home. Ragal slaughtered the ram from the flock and gave them a cordial reception. When they had bathed and reclined to eat, Tobiah said to Raphael, Brother Azariah, ask Ragal to let me marry my kinswoman Sarah. Ragal overheard the words, so he said to the boy, Eat and drink and be merry tonight. For no man is more entitled to marry my daughter Sarah than you, brother. Besides, not even I have the right to give her to anyone but you, because you are my closest relative. But I will explain the situation to you very frankly. I have given her in marriage to seven men all of whom were kinsmen of ours, and all died on the very night they approached her. But now, son, eat and drink. I am sure the Lord will look after you both. Tobiah answered, I will eat or drink nothing until you set aside what belongs to me. Ragel said to him, I will do it. She is yours according to the degree of the Book of Moses. Your marriage to her has been decided in heaven. Take your kinswoman. From now on, you are her love and she is your beloved. She is yours today and ever after. And tonight's son, may the Lord of heaven 
prosper you both. May he grant you mercy and peace. Then Ragal called his daughter Sarah, and she came to him. He took her by the hand and gave her to Tobiah with the words, Take her according to the law, according to the degree written in the book of Moses, she is your wife. Take her and bring her back safely to your father. And may the God of heaven grant both of you peace and prosperity. Ragel then said, Ragel then called Sarah's mother and told her to bring a scroll so that he might draw up a marriage contract stating that he gave Sarah to Tobiah as his wife according to the degree of the Mosaic law. Her mother brought the scroll and Ragel drew up the contract to which they affixed their seals. Afterward, they began to eat and drink. Later, Ragel called his wife Edna and said, My love, prepare the other bedroom and bring the girl there. She went and made the bed in the room, as she was told, and brought the girl there. After she had cried over her, she wiped away the tears and said, Be brave, my daughter. May the Lord grant you joy in place of your grief. Courage, my daughter. Then she left. When the girl's parents left the bedroom and closed the door behind them, Tobiah arose from bed and said to his wife, My love, get up. Let us pray and beg our Lord to have mercy on us and to grant us deliverance. She got up, and they started to pray and beg that deliverance might be theirs. And they began to say, Blessed are you, O God of our fathers. Praise be your name forever and ever. Let the heavens and all your creation praise you forever. You made Adam and you gave him his wife Eve to be his help and support. And from this too, the human race descended. You said, it is not good for the man to be alone. Let us make him a partner like himself. Now, Lord, you know that I take this wife of mine not because of lust, but for a noble purpose. Call down your mercy on me and on her, and allow us to live together to a happy old age. They said together, Amen, Amen, and went to bed for the night. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in His ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife shall be a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home. Your children, like olive plants, around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Please stand.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, This is the first is this Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no, greater, there is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher, you are right in saying he is one and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, our readings today are about love. In our first reading, we heard about the story of Tobiah and Sarah, their marriage and their love for each other. And it is wonderful to hear this story because on the very first night of their marriage, during their honeymoon, the very first thing that they did was to pray together. Tobiah prayed to God, acknowledging that Sarah is God's gift to him. And Tobiah asked God's mercy so that they may be together to old age. The love of husband and wife. But before they expressed their love each other, they expressed their love for God. And this is precisely what Jesus tells us in our gospel today. Jesus speaks of the greatest commandment. And what is the greatest commandment? To love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. To love God above all else before you love others and before you even love yourself. By saying this, Jesus teaches us that in order to love rightly, we must love God first. If we put the love of God above all our other loves, then God will put our love for others in their proper places. Kung gusto nating magmahal ng tama, mahalin muna natin ang Diyos. Sapagkat ang pagmamahal sa Diyos kapag ating inuuna sa lahat, malalagay sa tamang lugar ang ating pagmamahal sa ating kapwa. This is the example given to us by Tobiah and Sarah. To love God first 
before expressing love for each other. Kaya nga sa mga mag-asawa, mahalaga, let us check. Do you love God first before loving each other? Or do you love each other so much that you forget the love for God? Minsan, ganyan tayong magmahal sa isa't isa. Patay na patay sa pagmamahal sa kapwa. Buong pagmamahal ibinibigay sa kapwa. Nakakalimutan na mahalin ang Diyos. At dahil nakalimutang mahalin muna ang Diyos, yung pagmamahal natin sa isa't isa, pumapalya. Dahil nawawala sa lugar, hindi nagiging tama ang pagmamahal dahil nakalimutan mahalin muna ang Diyos. Husbands and wives, see to it that you love God first before loving each other. Because if you, if you put the love of God first before loving each other, then the love of God, the love for God, will put your love for each other in its proper place. Sa mga mag-aasawa, check nyo muna, sino ba ang unang mahal nitong mapapang-asawa ko? Ako ba? O ang Diyos? Kapag ikaw ang unang niyang minamahal at hindi ang Diyos, mawawala sa lugar ang pagmamahal na yan. Pero kapag ang unang minamahal ay ang Diyos, bago ikaw, kapag sinabi sa iyo, pasensya ka na, mas mahal ko ang Diyos kaysa sa iyo, yan ang pakasalan mo. Kasi yan ang magmamahal sa iyo ng totoo. The one who loves God first will always be faithful. The one who loves God first will always do good. The one who loves God first will never commit anything wrong or immoral. The one who loves God first will always love in a pure and holy way. Because the one who loves God first has fear of the Lord and he or she will not do anything that will hurt the Lord and the people he or she loves. Today, we celebrate the memorial of the Ugandan martyrs, St. Charles Luanga and Companions. They were the first converts to Christianity in Uganda, and they were the first martyrs of that African nation. You know, a martyr can only die as a martyr if the person loves God first. Without the love of God, we tend to preserve ourselves. Bakit ako mag-aalay ng buhay para sa Diyos? Uunahin ko ng ingatan ang sarili ko. And so these young people, 22 of them, who went away the wishes who did not follow the wishes of the king who preserved their faith and their chastity their purity against the wishes of the king they loved God and because of the love of God they were able to offer to God the supreme sacrifice the perfect gift of their own lives all because they love God first. My dear brothers and sisters, do you love God above all else? Do you love God above your husband, above your wife, above your children, above your family, above your possessions, above your positions, above your power and authority? Does anything or anyone compete 
with your love for God? Sino ba ang kalaban ng Diyos sa ating pagmamahal? If we love God above all else, then God will help us love others truly, purely. If we love God above all else, then our love for each other will be genuine and holy. Please stand. Let our prayers today show that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, mind, and strength. Let our prayers show that we love our neighbors as we respect and reverence ourselves. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may, ne may never cease to proclaim love of God and neighbor as the heart of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That we may <clears throat> never forget to show compassion to those who are underprivileged, unwanted, and unloved. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That we may treat every person with kindness and respect. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That by the gentle touch of the Spirit, we may have a deeper compassion for the sick and the elderly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That Christ may bring to his eternal kingdom our departed loved ones. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray in silence for our personal petitions. Let us remember the people who need our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. Heavenly Father, make us worthy of your call. Give us the grace to live out this commandment of love in word and deed. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. We offer you sacrifice, O Lord, humbly praying that as you granted the blessed martyrs grace to die rather than sin, so you may bring us to minister at your altar in dedication to you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyrs, St. Charles Luanga and companions, 
or doubt like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the, in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna in the, in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our Administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Charles Luanga and companions, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, and lead us, us not into, into temptation, temptation, but deliver, deliver us from, from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin 
and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter, enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. We have received this divine sacrament, O Lord, as we celebrate the victory of your holy martyrs, that what helped them to endure torment, we pray, make us in the face of trials, steadfast in faith and in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. <laughs>